Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Amos. Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. We're going to look at one verse today. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. The title message is, Who are your friends? Who are your friends? Who are your friends? Who are your friends? Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Who are your friends? The Bible says, Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? praise you and to listen to your word. We ask you, Lord God, that you will fill your creature with the Holy Spirit, give him the liberty of, and the authority on high to declare your word to us, to preach the whole house of God. We ask you that you would open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to uh, be swayed by the things that are happening in the world or even in our lives, but help us to just focus in your word and hide your words in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. Mm -hmm. For those who are not saved, Lord God, let today be the day of their salvation. Lord, convict their hearts of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and make them uncomfortable until they do get saved. Father God, we ask you that you come back soon. The world's getting worse and worse. Amen. And there's nothing better than to see you see your soon return. Father God, help each and every one of us to fight the good fight of faith. Help us to battle hard against the world, flesh, and the devil. Amen. And help us to separate ourselves from those. Yes. And then separate unto you, Lord God. Amen. We ask you that. You receive all the glory and honor. You just say pray. Amen. 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 Friends, friends, you know, that is a very impactful word. You know, everyone wants to have good friends. And in your lifetime, if you have a friend or friends that you could trust without any doubt, people say you're very blessed. If you couldn't count five people right now in your life where you have zero doubt, no hesitation, you know, you guys could even give your life to each other. If you have them, you're probably the richest person ever. But there are very few and in between people that you call friend that will last and last and last. Because life's going to throw a lot of, you know, curveballs at you. There's going to be a lot of trials and tribulations. And when it's time for people to sacrifice their own life or their own materials, their own time, even their own health, people stop. And that's where friendships break. And there's always, you know, element of jealousy and envy, always. I mean, true friends are happy. You know, when good things happen to your friends. You know, fake ones are always the ones that are jealous, right? They start complaining. How come it happens to them? It doesn't happen to me. They get a good job. I'm still mediocre. They get a, you know, good family. I have a mediocre. I mean, that's just, just you know, natural way people think. People always want to have something that they don't have. That's why, you know, commercials are rampant everywhere. TV, billboards, social media, you know, it's always throwing right at you. You know, wants you to have something that you don't need, yeah. right? For example, we didn't need cell phone to survive. No. Man, I might look a little young, but I was generation, I had no cell phone when I was growing up. Even in my adult days, we had pager. Go to the... You know, go to public phone booth and make calls. Yeah. Yeah. Even at my work, you know, my higher ups will page me and I go, I stop and then call them. You know, public phone. I don't know, do we call it a rotary phone? I even forget <laughs> what it was called. And people, when it comes to friends, it's just like that. If they're usable, you keep them. 
now if you lose, if, if they're you know, no longer needed, you tend to throw them away. Amen. That's how the world thinks of as a friend, right? Yeah. At this moment, I have A, B, C, D friend. But if my situation change, and those are going to be no longer my friends. That's the mentality a lot of people have. That's the mentality the new generations have. It's all about them, yeah. you know. Essence of friendship is always thinking about others. That's how it is. You know, Jesus Christ is the greatest friend Amen. ever. Amen. But if you are not saved, he's not your friend. Right. He's someone that you're going to bow your knees down to at the judgment, and yes. you're going to confess with your tongue that he is Lord before you're sent down straight down to hell. Yes. So don't ever think that someone's wearing Jesus Loves You t-shirt and you think that, you know, Jesus is their friend no. without checking their salvation. Amen. Uh, devils could wear Jesus Loves Me too. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I mean, Satan is out there could wear Jesus Loves Me. Yeah. Right? But he did show his love at Calvary. Yes. It was past tense. He died for everybody. He died for Muslims. He died for Catholic. He died for Baptist, Presbyterian. He died for, you know, anything out there. All, everybody, right? Yes. Satan is, right? You know, yes. and the Wicca people, everything you bring it in, you know. Calvinists, Charismatics, yeah. you know, Assembly of God. He died for everybody. Amen. He did not die for certain people like Calvinists say. He died for every single person. Yes. And he showed his love at that point. Thank you, Lord. Right? But afterwards, it's on you. Yes. If you do not trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he's not your friend. Amen. He can't be your friend. He's going to be a terrible judge because he's fair. No, let's go to John chapter 15, verse 13. So point number one. Your number one friend should be Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. Yes. That's it. Yes. You know, as much as you love your wife and husband, as much as you love your children, as much as you love your best friend that you knew from your childhood days, they can't be the number one best friend. Right. It has to be Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you heard that question today, who are your friends? I'm pretty sure you start thinking about your friends and you start thinking about who are my closest friends. If Jesus Christ did not come to your head, number one, then you're backslidden. That's yes. it. I mean, you're not thinking about him. So you don't have any fellowship with him. So he's not your best friend. Then obviously you're backslidden. Let's be honest with each other, brethren. I mean, you don't have to sugarcoat anything. If you haven't been living righteously, if you haven't been living godly, and if you haven't had a close relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, you know, he, had, he hasn't been your best friend. Right. Yeah. Right. So which means that You've been backslidden. John 15, verse 13. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I mean, we're talking about Lord Jesus Christ. Muhammad did not die for people. Buddha didn't. All these cult leaders, they didn't. Oral robbers didn't. Right? You're going to ask Joel to do it? Joe Austin? Oh, Billy Graham? Compromisers? No. Jesus Christ did. Amen. And he died for, I mean, you and me. I mean, that is the greatest friend. Yes. Yeah. You know, in a sense of just humanistic ways, military folks, you know, God bless them, they have great bond as friends. Because they're out there in the battle, you know, protecting each other with their own lives. Yes. That's why when they come back, you can't break that bond. You know, they're the best friends. Yes. But here, we have Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ, Amen. who died for you and me. Thank you, Lord. And he's my friend. Amen. And he's my best friend. Amen. You know, this terms. I think I'm even old. This term's even old, right? You know, kiss you is like BFF, right? Yeah. If you don't know what it is, it's okay. It's like best friend forever, right? Yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure they have a new terms now, you know, something that's probably shorter because they don't like to think, they don't like to write. They want to use acronym, acronyms for everything. Yeah. 
But think about it. Jesus Christ, in reality, he fits that perfect more than anybody else. Yes. I mean, he's forever my Lord, my Savior, Amen. and my best friend. Yeah. yeah. Think about it. If you have been spending a lot of time with Lord Jesus Christ, then you know he's your best friend. But if you haven't, then who has been your best friend in your life? Think about it. It can't be a human being. Human beings are very imperfect. You and I could have the best intentions, but we could always commit sin and disappoint each other. Yes. Lord Jesus Christ never disappoints. That's right. Amen. He never disappointed me. Right. He will never disappoint you. Yeah. You say he did, it's on you. You're a liar, <laughs> right? Let God be true, but every man a liar. Yes. Yeah. Romans 3. Which means you have to really check your current Christian walk with the Lord. That's right. If he has not been your best friend, that means you put something else in front of him. Yeah. You know, the Lord blessed us so much with his word. Amen. He has blessed us, you know, with a new life. And he even blessed us with things that we don't deserve at all, like grace and mercy. Amen. You know, as I was teaching Wednesday on the book of Revelation, we're talking about some rewards that we'll receive. And think about it. You know, gold, right? If you proclaim Jesus Christ as God, he's first in your life as God. You're going to lay up yourself gold in heaven. Think about it. You're like, when I go to heaven, I want to have something, you know. But it's so hard for me. You know what? If you tell everybody Jesus is your God. Yeah. If you tell everybody Jesus is God. If you tell everybody he's my number one. You worship him yeah. as God. Bible says you have gold. You're building gold in heaven. Amen. You know, lay up yourself treasures in heaven. Not here on the earth. Yes. How easy can it get? Okay. I mean, Lord, I mean, think about it. Lord made salvation simple. Yeah. But even some of the rewards, we're not talking about martyrs rewards here, where you are out there, you know, dying for the Lord Jesus Christ. But just worshiping him and saying he is God, God says you're going to get gold in heaven. You're laying up gold. Right? I mean, that's like the easiest thing that you could get. Yeah. I mean, for some religion, it's kind of the hardest thing. Like Jehovah's Witness. Right. They can say Jesus is God. Right? right? Yeah. It's so hard for them. Yeah. Even like all the other religions, right? Yeah. Like Islam, you know, Buddhism, like all those things. But as a Bible-believing Christian, you could say all the time. Yeah. That Jesus is God. Amen. And without controversy, great is the mystery of God. God was manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. Why can't you say it? Why don't you proclaim it? You know why? Because he's not your best friend. That's it. When you don't think about a person constantly, you can't really talk about him. I mean, I don't think about Biden all the time. So I don't talk about him all the time, right? That's good. <laughs> but I want to be out there talking about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, just add, add a layer, right? People love gold. People love silver. Silver, if you preach salvation, if you, you know, preach the gospel, you're going to receive it. Silver symbolizes redemption, Right? You and I are redeemed, Amen. right, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're out there on the street preaching the gospel. You're at home, you know, anywhere, passing out tracts. That's silver you're laying up in heaven. When are you going to do it? When you truly understand who Jesus Christ is. He's God. He's your Lord and Savior. But he's also your best friend. You know, why do people say, I want to have a best friend? Why do people have BFF everywhere, right? Why do people always talk about it? Because they could talk about life's issues, you know. Anything that's happening in their life, ones that even if they can talk to their own family about, they talk to their friends. Right. 
about it. Yeah. I'm not sure about you. I mean, when was the last time you really put your heart out and talk about your life to Lord Jesus Christ? Are you going to internet to find answers? Are you going to your co-workers to find answers? I mean, are you always only relying on your family to find answers? You have to go to the Lord first. Amen. You got to talk to Him, Absolutely. right? And let Him talk to you. Yes. You know, it is not a good thing for you to always say, what should I do in this situation when answers clearly in the Word of God? That's it. Right. It only tells people that you don't study the Word of God, you don't read the Word of God. You're that shallow person who, wants, who only has itching ears. Yeah. You're that person who would jump the churches, right? Yes. Oh, pastor said something that I like today. Let's see if he's going to tell me something I like this week. Oh, no. You know, he's preaching against me, against my sin. I hate it. I'm going to go to the next church, you know. I'm going to go to the next church. Man, church hoppers. Their best friend is not Lord Jesus Christ. No. Their, their best friend is themselves. Yes. Right? You have to realize that. Who is your best friend? Like, is your best friend you? You know? Like, you love to see yourself in the mirror and start talking to yourself. Man, how good looking you are. How pretty you are. You know? Like, oh, man. You never disappoint me. I mean, you disappoint yourself the most. I mean, let's be honest about it. Then, think about it. I mean, when was last time for some of you, you spent, you know, like a right amount of time, right? I'm telling you, if you have a friend, best friend, your conversation will not end in one minute, 30 seconds, even five minutes. No. Especially if you haven't talked to each other for a long time, you're going to talk for a while, Right? You have a lot to talk about. Your family, your life, your work, you know, everything in between. But when it comes to Lord Jesus Christ, man, you only have like 10 seconds to talk to me about. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Give me this, give me that. And then you're like stuck. Why? Because you don't have any relationship. You have to start building, you know, your fellowship with Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. You got to build it. It doesn't just come to you without any effort, right? No. you got to put some effort into it. Yeah. It's not a condition of salvation once again. But once you're saved, you got to spend more and more time with the Lord. Yes. Get to know your best friend. Yes. What do you really know about Lord Jesus Christ? Think about it. In real life, for example, like husband and wife, you guys should be best friends, right? Yes. I mean, you shouldn't have other people coming in between. No. That's when, you know, a lot of bad things happen, adultery and all the stuff. Yes. Infidelity. But if you guys are best friends, then it's going to end well. Right? Yes. And especially if you're a saved Christian, that's really good. Yeah. But if you aren't, and one of them save, other one is not, you really need to pray for each other. Right. You know, you have different spirits, you know, different fathers. One's God and one's devil. Right? It's got to be hard. Because you, if you knowingly did, you know, you unequally yoked together knowingly, then it's on you. You reap what you sow. But if you got them saved afterwards, what can you do, right? Yeah. You know, but you got to pray. At that point, when if I were to ask any of our church members, like I say, for example, Brother Richard, you know, tell me about your wife. Her name is Tracy. And they're like, you got nothing else to talk about? Man, that's a bad sign, right? <laughs> you know, same thing with Sister Tracy, right? Well, anybody here, what does that tell you? You don't really care for each other, yeah. right? You don't talk to each other, right? And it's almost like a, just a ritual. How are you so different than Catholic religion and other religions? When they do everything just out of ritual many times. Yeah. It's not even from the heart. Right? Yeah. Marriage shouldn't be a just ritual. No. Right? right? Your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ has become so systematic and robotic that you say the same thing over and over during prayers without even meaning. And you don't even do it a lot. And you don't even do it for a long time. And 
you tend to forget about it. Man, all the rewards that you're missing, I'm not talking about you live for rewards, but because he loved you so much, because you, know, you had that first love, you just forgotten. It's a reminder for you and me. You know? We gotta remember who really Jesus Christ is. I mean, he's God, creator of the universe, who died for you and me, came into heart as our Lord and Savior. We're body of Christ, yes. right? Don't try to understand everything. <laughs> That's why there's faith, right? Yes. You believe because Bible is perfect and Bible says so. Then, what do you know about Jesus Christ? What do you know? You know he's God. You know he saved you from hell. Yeah. What else? Do you know his personality? Do you know his characteristic? Do you know what he had to go through? You know his ministry here on earth, right? You know what he's going to do when he comes back, mm. right? Yeah. All those things. What do you know? If he is your best friend, if you want him to be your best friend, you got to start no more about him, Amen. Right? right? And that's something that you have to get right with the Lord with. Yes. Because it's a command. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself, prove unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, write the divine word of truth. You have to meditate in the word of God. Who in the world who constantly studies and meditates in the word of God with the right heart will not think about Lord Jesus Christ all the time? Only reason you and I can go on is because of Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. You and, only reason you and I could see another day is because of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Only reason that we get to enjoy anything in this life is because of Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, it's not of you, yeah. right? It's not of you. He's not, he's not your, your worldly best friend. You know, sometimes, you know, it's hard to hear when so-called Bible-believing Christians have conversation and they think about this other people other than Jesus Christ like it's their God. It's like their idol, Right? People tend to fall into it. For example, young people here, you're, you're going through your careers, you're worrying about college, graduating college, and you've got to get a job, right? And say amongst your family members, you know, they have, you have people who have profession that you want to become. You know, just say doctor, right? And suddenly they become your idol, right? They're not saved, first of all, even if they are, they're not a Bible-believing Christian. They don't believe in the perfect word of God. Very backslidden, practicing a bunch of experiences. But because they have a job that you want to have, you're like, oh, man, they're my standard. You want to get to know more about them. You want to do how they got to where they are, right? And then suddenly, who is your God in your life? Don't say it's Jesus Christ, you liar. It's whoever you're following the most. Yes. Whoever you are thinking about the most. That's why don't let your wife and husband be your gods either. Yeah. Right? They, they, they're, you, know, you love them like yourself, man, right? And the woman, you submit yourself. You know? But for both of you, it should be Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's a good reminder for you and I. Who are your friends? And the first thing should be, man, Jesus Christ is my best friend. Amen. Man. I mean, that's him. Like, what a friend we have in Jesus. He yes. should really come out right away. And you know, every time I think about friend, that him always plays, right? And I might not remember every single verse, you know, what a friend we have in Jesus, right? Yes. You know, hey, I mean, every trials, every highs and lows that we go through, mountaintop, you know, valleys, Lord's always there yes. with me. I mean, inside of me. Yes. And he wants what's best for me. I mean, think about Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for to them that love God, to them who are they called according to his purpose. Who are we talking about? Everybody? No. Only people who trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. That's it. I mean, if you have that kind of blessing, why are you neglecting it? Why? It's like someone's giving you Billion dollars. I'm like, I don't want it. You know, someone's giving you eternal reward. I don't want it. You know, how foolish can you be? Yeah. But you are a fool. Why? Because apparently, Lori's not 
your best friend. Apparently, Lord is not number one in your life. Apparently, you don't know anything about the Lord. And you've been saved for how many years, right? And you should be ashamed when a new Christian, you know, they get fired up. You know, for sometimes it's for wrong reasons, okay? I mean, they're just babies, okay? You know, give them a break. You give your children a break, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you spank them every time they do something wrong. Man, maybe some of you, you know, that's pretty harsh, you know? But you got to give them a chance to make mistakes and learn from it. At least what you can learn is that zeal and passion they have, trying to know more about Lord Jesus Christ. I know you had it once in your life, especially when you first got saved. But life's journey has taken you away from that fire. You got to get it back. Yes. You know, it's harder. You know that, right? Yes. Once fire is almost out, in order to restart it, it's got to be hard. Yes. You think it was at the same place? No, all the elements came by already. There's water, there's dirt, you know, maybe even snow, but he still survived. It's like right here, like super low. God, God's like, okay, you still have a chance. Amen. Man, are you trying to start the fire when there's like a, you know, water? That's like the hardest thing to do. Yeah. But I mean, you got to bring more dry stuff and try to, you know, yeah. make it a fire to start. I don't know what you're going to have as an amber or anything, right? So it gets harder and harder. But you have to do it. Well, are you going to quit right now? Like, oh, you know. I live enough life, and you're only like 25. <laughs> I mean, that's like our kids nowadays, you know. There's college kids, you know, all these, you know, things going on out there, which is, I mean, I don't even want to spend time, you know, dumb, stupid things going on, you know. I mean, all this, like, they just want easy life, easy life, easy life, easy life, you know. Spoiled breads everywhere. But you and I shouldn't be like spoiled bread Christians, right? You and I should be diligent trying to know Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Your own Savior and Lord, your own God. Yes. These extremists out there, terrorists out there, right? They know about their God very well. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, you, you might come back and say, oh, because, you know, they're worked by salvation. So what? Yeah. They're learning. Yeah. They know everything about them. They, so since you got saved, so you're okay? I'm saved. I'm going to put my feet on the couch and then do nothing, right? You know, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't stop. It actually starts. That's the beginning, right? Stop saying as a little baby and start growing up and start really, really, this is the real good experience, your fellowship with Lord Jesus Christ. So... Go to 1 John 1, 9, get right with the Lord, confess your sins, and then start over, yes. start over, start over. So who are your friends? Number one, it should be Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, who shouldn't be your friends, right? Who shouldn't be your friends? Number one, people that who shouldn't be your friends are Bible corruptors. Number one. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Every, every new Bible changed this verse, including New King James. New King James and King James are not the same, by the way. They're different. Yes. Yeah. You're comparing something beautiful to a pig, That's right? True. Yeah. You know? That's true. It's, it's different. Yes. It it's different, right? So, I mean, if you want to play with your pig all the time, go ahead, sure. right? Yeah. I'm going to stick with King James Bible. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, the Bible says, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. There are many corruptors of the word of God. Yeah. When Apostle Paul was writing... You know, he didn't complete right. his epistles yet. So he's talking about Old Testament. And people during that time already, not just few corruptors, 
There's so many corruptors of the Bible already at that time. I mean, these people who think they're so smart, right? Oh, yeah, you know, King James Bible, old language, whatnot, right? Blah, 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 you know. And they change the verses. You know, ultimately, you know why they do it? Because they want to cover up their sins. That's why. I mean, a lot of verses are changed so that because King James Bible will straight up say it's a sin. Yes. But the new versions cover it up. I mean, they don't want to believe Jesus is God. So they change the deity of Jesus Christ. They don't want to believe hell's for real. So they get rid of it, you know. And then they start even like, you know, doing best, but you have to do it in the will of God. They change it, you know. Do whatever you can to accomplish your goal. As in, whatever you can to grow your churches. Bring in rock music, right? Bring in, you know, drugs, worldly dress. Bring in everything. Yeah. It's fine. Because their version says, oh, you just have to make that goal no matter what. Wow. Right? That's why you can't have any Bible corrupter, you can't have anybody who does not believe King James Bible yeah. against your so-called friend. Yes. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to try to corrupt you. Yeah. Yes. I mean, little leaven, leaven is the whole lump. I mean, there's a reason why, right? Yeah. You know, our, what is it? Uh, peewee room looks pretty good now, right? Amen. A lot of people put some work in it. We have a beautiful mountain over there. Can you imagine one of the little kids put their hand in a black paint, put it there, and suddenly rub it, even just the one part? It's, it's going to become pretty ugly right away. Yes. Yeah. You got to keep it pure. Yes. Keep it pure. Amen. There's no reason for you to go into the internet, start listening to all these you know, Bible corruptors. Yeah. Right. And you're like, oh, man. You know, my something computer algorithm popped up. Why King James Onism is wrong, you know? Like, what's wrong with Dr. Ruckman, you know? What's wrong with BBCI, you know? King James Onism is cults and stuff, right? <laughs> they have a baseless accusation everywhere, yes. right? It's all their feelings. Yeah. You know what they always say? They say, you guys are too mean. Amen. You're too mean. But we're not doing it because we don't like you. We do it because the Lord said to do it. The truth. Yeah, the Lord said to preach the truth. That's Amen. the only reason. Right. If you get hurt by it, that's you. Yes. Something's wrong with you. Yeah. Right? And they changed the word corrupt to paddle. Right. Paddling of the word of God. Well, what does that even mean? Man. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a real carn artist to me. Right? Yeah. You know why? Because all these publications, Zondervan or Thomas Bly Anderson, I don't know, because all they want is money. Yes. Why is King James Bible does not have any copyright? Every other Bible has it. Do you really want to, how should I say, preach the gospel to every creature? Then get rid of the copyright. Do you really are doing this for lore and nothing else, not for your you know, own revenue and selfish money reasons. Amen. Get rid of it. Yes. yes. Like, oh, so, but, you know, but we have to keep the operations. If you need it, Lord's going to bless you with it. Yes. I mean, that's why there's you know, law of offerings sometimes, right? Yeah. You know, you think George Mueller had to come, <laughs> publicly come out and say, I have to copyright this. No. He relied on the Lord because he knew he was in the will of God. These Bible corruptors, you have to avoid them. Amen. I mean, I know you grew up with certain friends. I know you're doing your best to witness to them. You know, that's a different story. But you shouldn't go out of your way and suddenly start going, ah, that person, they, don't, they think King James is good, but they don't believe in the perfect word of God. But, you know, they have a lot of following uh, you know, they look good. You know, they're pretty. Okay, so I'm going to be friends with them. Man, you know, 
you're unequally yoked together. Yes. Yeah. You got to be careful. You know, whenever you're dealing with Bible corruptors, you know, don't ever be swayed by someone who says it's the best translation. It's not the best translation. It's the Word of God. Yes. Yeah. It is the scripture that Paul shared with Timothy. It was copy. It's a scripture. Yes. Right? When Jesus Christ read out of Isaiah, it was copy. Yes. No original. Amen. It's perfect word of God. That's why, you know, as harsh as it sounds, if you don't believe in the perfect word of God, King James Bible, it's going to be hard for you to stay at our church. Yes. Yeah. Because I'm going to kick you all the time. Keep kicking. I mean, I have to. Yes. I mean, all the Bible corruptors. You know, I have to. Because we, if you have any other f- reasons and feelings, don't come to see me or anybody else. Because eventually, you know, your heart's going to come out. And then you could go to next door. You could go to like a, two doors down. They don't believe in the perfect word of God. No. I mean, you could have more fun with them fleshly. Yeah. Experience. You could experience it. Like jump, go, do jump up and down while you're, you know, singing, Lord, I lift your name on high or something, <laughs> right? You know, something like that, right? Yeah. And afterwards, you're like, oh, what just happened? Yeah. You, just, you just came out of concert. Am I saved? Worldly concert, right? You prayed a sinner's prayer after somebody and you don't even know what it means. No. I could tell you because I was in it for like eight years. Yeah. I was leading songs and everything, but it's like, man, I had no, no, I guess, fulfillment at all. Mm-hmm. I, I knew I was lost. Yeah. But all this singing and praise and worship didn't really help me. It just stirred up my flesh. That's it. Nothing yeah. spiritual. Even these corruptors, they're going to use enticing words. So you have to be grounded grounded in the perfect word of God. Then, if you shouldn't hang around with Bible corruptors, then you should hang around with the opposite. Bible believers. King James Bible. That's That's it. it. I mean, you don't have to go anywhere, right? If you're nearby, if you have a Bible-believing church somewhere, go. I mean, especially people listening. If you don't, you know... I mean, I feel bad, right? They don't have a church to go to. At least you have an internet nowadays. But if you do go, why do you even have to do, you know, church hopping amongst Presbyterian, amongst Catholic, you know, amongst all those churches when you have a Bible believing, you know, King James only dispensational, yes. you know, right church, right leaders in place, go over there. Yes. Right? Then you have to understand that my friends should be. Bible believing friends, Amen. right? Yes. You know, as much as some of these people that you see around, your, your personalities might not match, but you're part of each other. Yes. You're body of Christ, right? Amen. If my ring finger, you know, hurts me, I'll find a way to fix it. Because it's part of me, mm-hmm. right? If you know you each other, if you trust in Christ, your body of Christ, then you're going to do best to fix whatever it is. You have to. You're going to live the rest of your Christian life as someone who's hurt or broken and who's hurting. You fix it. How hard is it to fix it? You fix your own body. You're like, oh, you don't know that person. You know, Have you prayed about it? Yeah. Right? You know, I mean, one of the, my favorite verses is Romans Chapter 5, verse 8, you know, he says you can love him through Holy Ghost. If I hate him, I'm going to say, Lord, please love him through me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Did you ever even pray that, right? Or you're just saying, please get rid of him from the church, you know? <laughs> you know, Lord, please, you know, I don't want to see him again, you know? Oh, you know? And then they become bigger and closer to you, right? Yeah. So you have to. Have a right fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. If there's anything stopping in between, you have to get it right. A lot of times, I, I love it, right? Bob Jones Sr. said the problem's with you. Yeah. It's because of you you feel that way, right? I mean, if you truly look at yourself and see how wicked you are, all those bitterness... 
all those hateful thoughts, jealousy and envy, will disappear. Because you start looking at yourself at ground zero. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like just a sinner saved by grace. Yes. I mean, yeah. you know, they are the same. I'm brothers and sisters in Christ. Why should I hate him? When the Lord said love one another, right? I'm disobeying the Lord. Yes. A lot of times, do you guys realize that you know, you're disobeying the Lord? You know, when you're loving your brethren, right? They should become... You don't have to be the best of the friends, right? Yeah. But you shouldn't, you shouldn't have like other people above them. Right. That's what I'm saying. Because from personal experience, how close you are with the worldly people, unsaved people, they're still a child of the devil. Yes. John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil. Yeah. They could turn on you anytime. Yes. Uh, some of you experienced it, right? I experienced it. Oh, man, I thought they were like the best of the friends, right? Behind your back, devil's working. And it took years and years, but it happened. Dude, I was like, I mean, I felt betrayed, but I was stupid. You know, yes. I wasn't on my guard. My priorities were wrong. Uh -huh. Same thing's going to happen with you. As much as I say there are personal di dif differences, you have to pray for each other. You have to love one another. You have to get to know each other a little bit, you know, at least know the names of each other. Ridiculous that you've been coming to church for many, many years or many, many months. You don't even know each other's name. It just tells you, it's like, how does your finger look like? I don't know. I haven't seen it for five months. Probably dirty. You didn't even wash it, you know. It just tells you. Because you are a lazy Christian who doesn't do anything. Yes. Go out of your way. I mean, if you... <laughs> If, I mean, if you have children, are you going to say, you know, they have to be the one always talking to me first? No, you talk to them. Communication goes both ways. Yes. You know? That's why, you know, I love brethren, you know, especially when you're at hospital to each other. You shouldn't be just select few. Yeah. It should be everybody, right? I mean, how hard is it to say, how are you, you know, what is your name? <laughs> I've seen you for five months, but I never got your name, right? It's never too late, yeah. right? There's some, you know, introvert, bashful person, but even the most introverted and bashful people within their family and within with their friend circle, they talk. Yes. Yeah. So don't tell me that, you know, I'm too shy and bashful. No. No, you do it. You've been doing it, you know. I mean, unless you're someone from Appalachia and, like, you know, you grew up as a hermit and then this first time you came into the world after 35 years in the mountain, that's different. But how many of you guys are like that? No. You have family or have family and you've been growing up and you have co-workers and you have people, you know, acquaintance everywhere. So you have to understand that, hey, my friends should be my Bible-believing, you know, Christians. Yeah, you got to work at it. And then there will be less gossip, right? Yes. Because you kind of know each other now. Instead of saying stuff about someone that you don't know, at least you know, so uh, no reason for gossip, right? right? No backbiting. Or if there's any misunderstanding, miscommunication, you just talk to each other, exactly. yes. right? You know, I mean, including pastors, pastor's wife, everybody, you know, we're just human beings just like you, right? If I'm doing anything wrong, or if you feel anything otherwise, just let me know. Yeah. You know, yeah. doors open. By the way, you know, it's uh, we are all body, one body in Christ, and especially we are such a minority in this world right now, in yes. these times. I mean, if we don't think about each other, if we're not our friends, you know, after Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. Then who are you going to be, right? This is where you get encouragement, admonishment. Yes. This is where you could pray for each other. Amen. You know, prayer of saints actually work. Yes. You know that, right? Yes. You know, that's why we ask for prayer. Because the Lord hears, right? You know, why would, why would you think missionaries say, you know, more than your money, we need your prayers, right? Yes. Because the Lord hears, Thank you, Lord. right? Yes. And then, finally, I mean, so... Don't, don't, don't hang around with the Bible corruptors, okay? Yeah, right. right? Let Jesus Christ be your best friend. 
And then you got to be friends with, you know, your own Bible-believing, you know, Christians. And don't be that friend where you don't have accountability, right? And don't be with a friend who doesn't have accountability. So it goes sideways. Lastly, you need to have accountability as a friend, especially to Lord Jesus Christ, number one, and your family and the brethren, and even outside of work now. I'm outside of church. And also, you shouldn't be with people who's not accountable. Church ministry will not do well if we have a bunch of you know, irresponsible, unaccountable people. Yeah. It runs. Why? Because we have people who's accountable right. you know, for good actions and also for bad actions. Right? Then you start thinking, I mean, who are my friends? Right? You know, people who left the church shouldn't be your best friend. Yeah. Right? There's reason why they left. Yes. Right? As long as God uses, you know, Pastor Kim, myself, you know, Mrs. Kim, my wife, and the leaders of the church, you know, God's going to use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In that point, they don't take any accountability. They just gossip, backbite. Mm-hmm. That's that. You join that group, wow. you guys will be unequally yoked together. Yes. And you become one of them. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, like I mentioned about the painting, once you start putting black up there, you think, you think those green, you know, pretty trees going to survive? No. Blackness will cover completely. Yes. Yeah. That's what's happening for some of you right now. You have that black hands just erasing you, you know, as a Bible-believing Christian that you ought to be. And some of you, you only have your feet left or part of your head left, and it's going to be completely, unless you cut it off. Yes. Hard but simple solution, brethren. Cut it off. Yes. They're like, it's so hard. Talk to them about the word of God. Yes. Talk to them about what's right. Yes. Talk to them about the right ministry. Talk to them that I support, you know, my pastor, pastor's wife, leaders, no matter what. You know, and you're yes. wrong, you know. That's one thing, you know, I, you know, I know that just like Joshua and Caleb, they stood for Moses, no matter what. Even when those 12, 12, out of 12 spies, 10 spies brought all this bad report, they stood. God bless them. What happened to the other 10? Same thing's going to happen with you, right? But you pray. Don't do blindly either, right? Because if I tell him, hey, go jump to the street on the freeway, he should be like, you cuckoo, you know, right? Yeah. You know, but as long as, you know, when you're right with the Lord, the Lord's going to re- lead you the right way, right? That's why Dr. Recommend is not our idol, right? Yes. We just follow the teachings that God has blessed him with. Because yes. it is right according to the Word of God, yes. right? Yeah. You know, simple as that. As long as it's according to the Word of God and it's right, you just follow. Yes. If not, then you pray, right? Lord will give you the right direction. Yeah? So, in conclusion, think about who are your friends in your life. If Lord Jesus Christ hasn't been your best friend and number one, let him be. Get right with the Lord. How close are you with your family, especially husband and wives, right? Are they your best friends? Or are you bringing other people into life? The devil's going to break your marriage sooner or later if you keep it that way. Bible corruptors, stay away. Stay away, right? Get closer to Bible believers. You're going you're gonna to spend eternity with each other. Yeah. And then be an accountable friends and be with accountable people. Let's yes. pray. Dear Heavenly Father, many times we just go each day not thinking about friendship, Lord. It's such an important thing. The fellowship that we need to have with you, Lord Jesus, we neglect it many times. Help us get right with you. You need to be our best friend. And afterwards, it should be set up where family and our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord God, we are not perfect, and we need to get right, and we need to be reminded over and over. Help us to be a better friend to our brothers and sisters in Christ, and above all, 
you know, help us to rely on our best friend, Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the rest of the services, and above all, even so, come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.